Hello everybody and welcome back to Void Dwarf Studios where today we go back to our communist type dictatorship type crazy blue headed space alien Tau and we're going to look into their battle suits because this video has been long coming for a while and quite frankly you collect Tau for the battle suits. Come on, just, just be honest. Most most of you collect Tau because of the battle suits. In fact, I was very tempted by the Tau purely because of the battle suits. Because I am a big fan of Gundam, Transformers, and, well, mechs. So, uh, yeah, that very nearly made me collect Tau Army until I realised that they didn't like close combat and these Tau uh, mechs were mostly guns. Which is awesome, don't get me wrong. Just look at Gundam Heavy Arms, that thing is absolutely amazing. But, um, yeah, no, just just not my cup of tea without the close combat. But that doesn't mean that these mech suits are not without their perks. In fact, they are one of the best types of vehicles that the Tau use to get the most out of their army. So, let's have a look, shall we? The lovable stealth suit. For this example, we are looking at what is known as the XV-25 Stealth Suit, the smallest of all the Tau battle suits, designed for stealthy operations and, well, covert ops, infiltration, sabotage, all those kinds of fun things. Essentially, this is the Firecast Special Ops Unit, and the uh, plan for it is pretty simple. Disappear using its highly advanced holographic camouflage technology, reappear and then shoot whatever your target is with a wonderful, wonderful big gun. It's amazing how often or not, when you shoot things with a big gun, they tend to explode and, well, disappear. But it's not just a really funky camouflage suit. It has cloaking fields that dampen the sound, it has special shielding to prevent it from being detected by heat sensors, and basically this means it's almost impossible to spot unless you can see the slightest shimmer in the space you're staring at. And if you're staring at a space that long, odds are that the Tau inside the suit has realised you're onto him, or her, and uh, decided to just blast your head off to be absolutely certain. Fun fact, the XV-25 is kind of a rushed model for the Tau, because the Space Marines, the, uh, to be precise, the Ultramarine Strike Force during what is known as the Kappa Mortis Incident, uh, kind of propelled the XV-25 into production, because the Space Marines managed to get a hold of a stealth suit helmet, and uh, the Tau became really scared that the Space Marines will then be able to predict and or detect them, making them effectively useless. So the XV-25 was put into production instead of a model known as an XV-22, which has more guns, but is more complex to produce. And uh, yeah, these became the new standard stealth suits. Whilst the... Uh, dual wielding gun variants do exist they are typically harder to get a hold of and typically they uh well they don't tend to be produced in big enough quantities for the tower to use them in a typical military campaign however the xv25 proved itself more than useful after a campaign known as the taurus campaign where they were deployed en masse and started gunning and destroying imperial guard supply lines causing such difficult food and water shortages that it essentially managed to sow so much panic in the Imperial Guard that they just had to fall back. And it's been proven time and time again that a well-placed stealth suit squad, when you have a couple of these along with a marker drone placed in the right place at the right time, can cause all kinds of havoc. The Tau have learned through bitter experience fighting the Orcs that if you kill off the biggest one, then there's a fairly good chance that the rest of them will infight and then you can mop up the rest. And it's always nice to make sure you destroy any orc mechs who get too fiddly and want to get their hands on your stealth suit. Typically speaking, your XV-25 is going to be armed with what is known as a burst cannon. Now, a burst cannon is the Tau equivalent of a multi-barrel Tau pulse rifle. Y you could kind of think of this as the machine gun of the Tau army. It fires pulse shots at rapid speeds and is fantastic at mowing down infantry, even lightly armoured vehicles when you get close enough. But if that's not enough bang for your buck, then one of the stealth squad members can replace their burst cannon with a fusion blaster. This is kind of the Tau's version of a multi-melter from the Imperium, 
except it has a far longer range and is much more common among these stealth units, hell, amongst Tau battle suits in general. Meaning that, well, your stealth suit team has all the guns it could need. You've got your burst cannons to mow down infantry, or you can use your fusion cannon to blast individual characters or tanks into smithereens. And because of the fantastic stealth technology, as I previously mentioned, these little buggers are really hard to hit and difficult to spot in time. Now, don't get me wrong, once you do spot them, you're going to be able to destroy them with relative ease, as although it has a sophisticated jetpack allowing it to jump out of the way of things fairly quickly, the armour on it is... good, but it's not going to stop anything once we start getting to plasma, melter, and, well, heavy bolter weapons. These are single pilot small mech suits after all, but they can be given a wide variety of upgrades not limited to targeting systems, counterfire defense systems, positive relays, shield generators, target locks, velocity trackers, all kinds of really funny gizmos that essentially mean that the stealth suit is going to be a royal pain in the butt, no matter how you slice it. And if you're using them, well, obviously it's a stealth suit. You insert it, at the opportune moment, shoot your guns like crazy at the unit you want dead, and then if possible, get the hell out of dodge. But if you fancy something with a bit more firepower than the XV-25, then you're going to want the Ghost Keel, a much larger and significant stealth suit threat. This wonderful, wonderful piece of tower technology is quite literally the pinnacle of their stealth range. And with enough firepower, it's more than capable of tearing apart squadrons of tanks, enemy infantry, and then just disappearing back into the shadows from whence it came. Or in broad daylight. <laughs> it could disappear back into the broad daylight. It's that good at stealthing. This wonderful piece was developed during the third sphere expansion, a time when new technology was very much in the forefront Thanks to the whole uh, space marines becoming a genuine threat to the Tau, the Tau were not used to something with such extreme toughness, ferocity and firepower, as well as close combat finesse and speed, and they needed something a bit better than their stealth suits to take them down in assassination missions. For this reason, the Tau created the XV-95, known as the Ghost Keel Battlesuit. In fact, this project was so secret that pilots were essentially picked from fringe abandoned set worlds and given very strict instructions to not discuss what they were doing with anyone. And these deep cover operations would involve assassinations, reconnaissance, sabotage, whatever. This insular band of warriors only got thrust into the light when Tau propaganda decided that it was the right time to unveil this new wonderful battlesuit and inspire the people to, well, <laughs> continue on in the greater good. This thing stands three times the height of a space marine, and it's even taller than a broadside, which we'll get to in a minute. It has a similar armour to the XV-22 and XV-25, except for the following. This wonderful thing not only has a jetpack, but it is combined with an anti-grav jet repulsion, meaning it can fly around the battlefield and glide really quickly and relatively quietly. It can drop from high altitudes, which means it's a perfect drop stealth insertion from your Tau transports, and with advanced sensors incorporated into the battlesuit, it allows it to basically get as much data as it wants without being detected. And the Black Sun filter, an advanced optical system that enhances and magnifies low light vision for the pilot inside, simultaneously helps filter out light sources and allow them to pick out targets better in battle. Multi-trackers allow it to shoot at multiple targets at once. It's constructed of a lightweight yet strong nanocrystal, a material that is light, impact resistant, corrosive resistant, and offers excellent protection. But it's the camouflage that of course makes this thing really special, because without this sophisticated camouflage, it's just a normal battlesuit, really. In fact, a lighter armoured battlesuit. 
The suit's integrated holographic disruption field allows it to essentially take photographs of its surroundings and copy that onto its body, allowing it to blend into the environment, much like a chameleon. And it operates under two modes. Passive, which allows it to essentially dampen all electromagnetic signatures, meaning it's really hard to scan for this thing, and it gives off virtually no heat signature, so you're not going to find it that way. And in active mode, the stealth suit field generator allows it to continuously change the picture that the holograms on its body on the armor project, meaning it can move really fast through terrain and yet still not give off its position beyond that of a faint ripple or blur. And as soon as this thing stands still, good luck trying to spot it. And just in case that wasn't bad enough, ghost keels are typically deployed with M5 stealth drones. These drones project overlapping stealth fields, which means that it's even harder to spot this thing because, well, you have these drones projecting additional shielding from different directions, making it virtually impossible to spot. And even if these two drones are destroyed, well, the ghost keel can sacrifice them to back up really fast and then try and come again at another angle. In terms of weapon systems, this thing has a lovely collection of arsenals. It is armed with either a cyclic ion raker, designed for destroying and atomizing large blocks of infantry, it fires a high impact energy projectile, and uh, yeah, it makes anything squishy go bye bye really, really unpleasantly. Despite this really devastating firepower, there is a cost. There is the risk that if you shoot this thing too rapidly, you will overcharge and disrupt the barrels, causing uh, all kinds of problems, including radiation, which is uh, not ideal. The other option you can take is known as a fusion collider, a much larger and more dangerous melter weapon than the previous one we talked about. And uh, yeah, this thing gets close to anything with any kind of armor or high toughness. Yeah, that thing's going to be atomized, particle by particle, uh, very rapidly, very quickly. And vehicles will just be turned into molten slag. And, you know, if that wasn't bad enough, its secondary weapon system mounted on its shoulder can be either a twin link burst cannon, as we previously mentioned, sorry, cannons, there's two of these things mounted on its shoulder, flamers, or more fusion blasters if you really want to make sure that that tank does not ever get up again. Good god, if this thing was used on an individual Imperial Guardsman... Uh, and if all this wasn't enough, there is the AI that accompanies this thing. Now, each ghost keel is piloted by a single Shashri, a highly trained pilot that I've discussed in you know, the commander section, and who will have also have been a former XV-25 stealth suit veteran. This warrior is then supported by an artificial intelligence, or integrated artificial intelligence. The goal is for it to assist the pilot in complex systems and manoeuvres. It monitors the physical and psychological well-being of the pilot on extended missions, and it comes with a personality of sorts. In fact, ghost kill pilots who spend long periods of time behind enemy lines find that they start treating their AIs more as people than machines. In fact, pilots become very attached to their ghost kill battlesuits, forming such a strong bond with their AI and basically keeping them from going insane on long missions behind enemy lines by yourself. A tense time to be alive if ever there was one. And on the rare occasion that these things are deployed in squads, typically working in groups of two to three, each one of these pilots will ritually bond themselves using the bonding knife ritual, as described in the Tau Warrior video. And the way they will operate is what is known as a heavy retribution cadre. Two of the ghost keels will move further in front, gathering data and intel on enemy positions and best methods of attack, best maneuvers that are possible, or that kind of thing, and the third one will fire the first shot, confusing the enemy, drawing them out, and then the other two will encircle and continue firing. And when caught in the middle of three of these, there isn't really a whole lot that can be done to, well, get out of that situation, unless you're, well, a demon prince. 
or something with very high toughness, very high speed, and uh, really, really good uh, observation skills, shall we say. However, like all Tau battle suits, if you get this thing into close combat, you're going to make mincemeat of it. Because that armor is only as good as the XV-25, and yeah, that's good, but it's not space marine proof by any stretch of the imagination. And it is at this point that we leave our stealthy Tau battlesuits behind, and we get on to the most common battlesuit, known as the XV-8, the Crisis Battlesuit. The mainstay of the Tau battlesuit list, and one of the most versatile Tau mobile suits, I keep calling them mobile suits, I really shouldn't do that, most versatile battlesuit that the Tau possess. Striking a wonderful balance between offense, defense, speed, maneuverability, and utility, these battle suits are the Tau's pride and joy, simply because of the fact that they can be, well, so versatile. This armor that they use, the, uh, the nano-crystalline alloy, is comparably as tough as Space Marine Ceramite, but weighs substantially less, meaning crisis suits can move much more quickly. With jetpacks mounted on their backs, it allows them to drop from low orbit and get the drop on people. It allows them to move quickly backwards, forwards and sideways in case you ever think you're going to get close enough to tag them. And they are physically strong enough to pulverize humans with just one punch. But it's not its close combat capabilities, because whilst punching things into goo is great, there are plenty of weapons that exist in the galaxy that are more than happy to remove the towel from the cockpit. It is the wonderful multiple weapon systems and support systems that these crisis suits can possess that makes them really frustrating. Including multi-trackers that allow them to target multiple targets, homing beacons and shield generators that give them better protection and survival, and black sun filters that allow them to be more accurate in low light conditions. A crisis battlesuit is... I suppose the clue is in the name, really. They are there when stuff is in crisis. They are to jump into any part of the battlefield, gun down whatever is causing the issue, and then jump out so that they can remain out of dodge. It's this incredible ability to advance very quickly and retreat equally as quickly whilst laying down firepower is what makes these crisis battle suits so handy. They are very hard to counter and they're very difficult to engage because of this. Typically deployed in groups of three, armed with burst cannons, allowing them to have a higher rate of fire against armoured infantry and light armoured tanks, or with plasma rifles which are fantastic at destroying anything heavier, and fusion blasters that just tell tanks to go away with extreme prejudice. And of course, like all good crisis suits, they are accompanied by Tau drones, each one having two drones apiece. These can be operated as gun drones, aka extra guns, shield drones, or marker drones. Shield ones obviously giving them greater protection from incoming fire, and marker drones allowing them to light up their targets and have easier times hitting them. And the weapon systems that you can have in addition to the main guns include flamers, missile pods, plasma rifles, airburst fragmentation projectors, and cyclic ion blasters. This is the most common battle suit that you're going to encounter, and, well, because of the Tau's method of warfare, where they will willingly withdraw from their position to find a tactical advantage elsewhere, means that they are frustrating as hell to tag. And of course, crisis battle suits can also be bodyguards for your commander, meaning that no matter what the situation, you're going to be having to fight these things almost for certain whenever you encounter a Tau army. And we start moving on to something with um, <laughs> some extraordinary firepower. The Broadside Battlesuit. Specifically, the XV-88. This is a Tau battlesuit specifically designed to just stay back and shoot. However, as it's bipedal, it has the mobility of the standard battlesuit, just with a much heavier gun. Uh, it's not going to be able to run rings around things, but it's faster than a tank, and it's more than capable of being manoeuvrable. This wonderful, wonderful piece of heavy firepower typically packs what is known as a twin-linked heavy rail rifle, one of the best anti-tank weapons that the Tau possess, 
and it can penetrate armour, well, pretty much like paper. There have been numerous reports of entire tank columns being absolutely decimated by just a few of these things. But if you don't want a rail rifle, then you can instead take what are known as high-yield missile pods. Not as powerful as the heavy rail rifle in terms of destructive capability, however, this thing is absolutely fantastic in decimating infantry formations and it will puncture through light vehicles without too many issues. And as secondary weapons, it can take what is known as the Smart Missile System, or Plasma Rifles, both of which are very, very handy at taking out smaller targets and, well, plasma, you know. Anything with high toughness is going to struggle. There are two main designs for this. The original XV-A8 had primary weapons mounted on its shoulders, and secondary weapons on the forearms. However, this was a bit more cumbersome and unwieldy, and the Earthcast figured it was best to tinker and go back to the drawing board, allowing this new model to be able to carry its primary weapon in its hand and have the missile pods or rifles mounted onto its shoulders, which provided a more stable firing platform and also made it easier, well, frankly, to manoeuvre and aim. Again, piloted by a chasse vrie, this is one of the more common battle suits that you'll tend to see. This thing basically has all the firepower of a Lehman Russ without the maneuverability and speed issues. You can take drones with it, which gives it that little extra protection, or you can give the drones missile pods that, you know, just rain extra firepower down on things, and it will quite happily just continue firing away and moving further and further out of dodge, making it a fantastic heavy artillery piece with the maneuverability of a mobile suit, typically fielded in groups of three, and slower moving because of their lack of a jetpack. And Tau commanders, because they are aware of how much slower they are than the average battlesuit, are very careful to deploy them as far back as they can, and use their longer range weaponry to make the best use of them on the battlefield. And next we have possibly the most frustrating battlesuit I've ever had to fight. I can normally tag broadsides, I can normally tag the standard crisis team battlesuits, and even the stealthy ones I can normally get guns on eventually, but the Riptide is one of the most frustrating things to try and destroy, because this thing makes the perfect balance for the Tau's love of movement and heavy guns, and is also tough enough strong enough and fast enough to avoid getting hit. Trying to tag this thing and make it stay in close combat is a mission in futility half the time. The Riptide Battlesuit, known also as an XV-104, literally strikes the perfect balance between ludicrously heavy guns, armoured protection, manoeuvrability and utility. It stands multiple times the height of your average fire warrior, and over triple the height of a space marine. This thing was unleashed during the Third Sphere expansion, when the Tau were trying to crack a particular world, and needed something with severely heavier firepower and maneuverability to be where they needed it to be. As the Tau were discovering more and more that the Imperium was a relentless and never-ending foe, and required something with enough firepower to make it back off, at least for the moment. Again, piloted by Shash Vri, this absolutely frustrating battlesuit has very thick and dense nanocrystalline armour, which give it the protection of a tank, but with the manoeuvrability of its smaller cousins, thanks to the wonderful jetpack coming out of its back. This thing can even drop from low orbit, and having one of these just turn up on your doorstep is quite the shock. And very odd is that this thing is actually quite capable of walking up to heavily armoured vehicles and just smashing them with its bare fists. Not that this is something that the Tau tend to use them for, but it packs the strength to be capable of doing this. And in order to operate the very complex and intricate systems on board, this thing has an artificial intelligence that helps the pilot with advanced combat systems and keeps the pilot com-linked to the cadre's Tau commander. This thing is comparable to Terminators and Dreadnoughts in terms of its toughness, thanks to no small measure to its armour, but also it packs what is known as the Riptide Shield Generator, 
a barrier shield that's powerful enough to even deflect shots from enemy titans. Not for long, obviously, but the fact that it could even prevent a titan from just one-shotting it is frankly ridiculously impressive. And typically these things are outfitted with two different main guns. A heavy burst cannon, so much like the smaller one we talked about earlier, except this thing has an even more insane rate of fire and is able to punch through enemy armour without too much difficulty, or an ion accelerator, a weapon that fires charged particles that, well, vaporise flesh and metal. And on top of all this, you can give them twin-linked missile systems, fusion blasters that work as melter weapons, or twin-linked plasma rifles. This thing by itself... Oh, sorry. And there are shield drones that come with it too. You can give them missile pods and shields for even more protection, and it comes with a whole host of advanced gadgets. These are pretty common across most battle suits, but they include things like advanced targeting systems, counterfeit defense systems, drone controllers, positional relays, an early warning device, stimulant injectors for the pilot if they are in serious pain, target lock, target arrays, and velocity trackers, all things that make it really, 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 really good at its job. And to make this even worse, these things tend to operate in groups of three, and it's deployed in one of three ways. Rapid insertion, where, well, these things drop from the sky and start laying waste everything around and then move out of the way. The retaliation cadre, which essentially means this thing leaps forward when an enemy is moving towards your more vulnerable vehicles, guns them down and then jumps back, giving the rest of your army time to retreat, and a fire-based cadre, which is relatively straightforward. These things just stay near the back and shoot, and just keep manoeuvring around the battlefield to wherever they're needed to be. So you're probably wondering, how in the hell does this have the energy to be able to move at the same speeds as a normal crisis suit, whilst having that kind of firepower, and, well, not being slow, cumbersome, and ridiculous? And the answer is actually really simple. Housed in its torso is what is known as a black matter Nova reactor. A highly experimental piece of tower technology specifically designed for the Riptide. Without this, this thing would be slower and more ponderous than even the broadside. It's largely been proven stable, although pilots do have the options to try and overclock this thing, which allow it to do ridiculous things with its guns. Essentially, you can overclock it to allow your weapons to have greater firepower or greater maneuverability. It is highly inadvised that you do this for long periods of time because, like I said, highly experimental. And whilst the energy from this thing is vast, it um, comes with that risk that you might blow up if you are too careless with it. But that's kind of the trade-off. You have a fantastically fast, heavy, armoured and manoeuvrable mech that can dish out firepower like nobody's business and even be capable of punching tanks. But it has that experimental generator, which means that if you are too careless with it, you run the risk of, well, blowing up and killing your pilot, something that the Tau are not fond of at all, because it takes a long time for a Tau pilot to be capable of flying something like this. Even with the artificial intelligence helping, this is a very complex machine, and I have traumatic memories of playing in games where someone would bring three of these things and just... Ugh, they are incredible battlesuits. For our last battlesuit, it makes me chuckle because the Tau had to get really inventive really, really fast when they encountered the Imperium and attempted to take worlds from them. They discovered rapidly that the Imperium had some ridiculous heavy armour, and whilst not as manoeuvrable as them, had the firepower to actually put them down. And, well... Also, they outnumber them like billions to one when we're talking about the Imperial Guard. But they had a real problem when it came to things like Imperial Knights and Titans. Riptides can hit and hurt them, but it takes too long. And the fact of the matter remained that these vehicles were more than capable of tagging them with their long-range guns. And, well, essentially causing them all kinds of grief. 
the Tau needed something even more powerful than a Riptide with Titan-level weaponry just to make sure that anything heavy doesn't cause too much problem. And it was this in mind that allowed for the creation of what is known as the KV-128, also known as the Storm Surge, one of the newest breed of Tau super-heavy ballistic suits. Now, technically, I can't really call this a battle suit. Like, yes, it has got the whole bipedal uh, appearance, but this thing is not designed around the Tau philosophy of warfare. This thing doesn't run around shooting its big guns, getting out of dodge, and using its long range to, well, make the best of things. Yes, it does have long range, but this thing is so big and cumbersome that it's described more often than not as a ballistic suit. And it is there to kill Titans. Now, typically, you need a group of three of these to make sure Titans stay down. But a single Storm Surge is capable of annihilating vast swaths of the enemy because it has absolutely absurd firepower. This thing is more often used in a defensive position. Behind Tau gun lines and energy force field protection to give it some chance of not being destroyed back. Like I said, this thing ain't dodging anything, and it's slow moving. Armed with either what is known as a pulse driver cannon, one of the largest versions of pulse weapons that the Tau possess, this is a superheated plasma gun specifically created to annihilate super heavy vehicles and titans. And whilst one shot from this thing isn't going to destroy a titan, it will certainly put a massive hole through an imperial knight who's not ready, and as these things tend to operate in groups of two to three, yeah, uh, against titans that will that will definitely do some really, really serious damage. The other variant is known as a pulse burst cannon. This thing is much better at hitting targets at longer distances, and is designed to have a large blast radius, meaning that any troops that are trying to come towards this thing and get hit by it, well, they're just going to go bye-bye. Vast quantities of them will go bye-bye from a massive plasma explosion, and its secondary weapons include twin-linked smart missile systems, cluster rockets, flamers, burst cannons, fragmentation projectors, drone-guided warheads, and four... Destroyer missiles, a larger and more advanced version of the Seeker missile, which is piloted by an AI and is there to, well, take out anything that the Storm Surge decides is a valid target. And the AI on board allows it to target the vehicle's weak spot and just make it go kaboom. And for protection, it does pack a shield generator to allow it to take some incoming fire. Piloted by two Shazfri crew, one who will keep the vehicle steady and, well, walking, and the other one will be looking at keeping an eye on its weapons and making sure that it aims and fires properly. These suits are usually mag-lifted into position by Mantas, very large flying tower airships, and once deployed, these things tend to stay in their position and are used to anchor the battle line. If you get close to these, then it's a good chance that the rest of the tower army is destroyed, But then again, getting close to one of these things is not advised, in no small part thanks to its countermeasures and its ludicrous number of guns. One notable formation that this thing likes to be deployed in is what is known as a heavy retribution cadre, where a squad of ghost keels work in tandem with two storm surges. These ghost keels will identify targets and allow for the storm surges to more accurately put their weapons exactly where they need to be. This is definitely a Tau battlesuit that you never want anywhere near the front line. You want this thing sitting as far back as possible and destroying anything that comes over. You have something that's capable of harming titans, and uh, Imperial Knights are going to disappear relatively quickly when this thing decides to target it. Or at the very least, it's going to heavily cripple them. And there you have it. These are the more common types of battlesuits that, well, A, that you can collect and use in your games, and B, feature most prominently in your Tau armies. Besides the Storm Surge, the entire philosophy of your Tau army is to 
use your maneuverability to never get into close combat until it's in your terms, if you choose. Heavy firepower that can be repositioned very quickly for more useful and tactical flexibility. And relatively good toughness, considering. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed this video on the Tau Battlesuits. Do you have a particular favourite? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. And I hope to hear from you all soon. Take care, everyone.